You're, you're not doing the intro now? Okay, because the first thing, yeah, because the first thing I wanted to get the interview out so that I can record that for radio side, right? Okay. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Undefeated record on the line, blah, blah, blah. Comes your way next. I'm, all, I'm okay. I don't need... I'm clear, right?
inside the Iroquois Lacrosse Arena, week number three of the Canadian Lacrosse League. About seven minutes from action down on the turf. I'm Matthew Carrick, joined now by Wayne Paddock. He is the president of the Wilmot Wild Lacrosse Club, I believe, as uh, he's brought the right apparel That's here right. this evening. I tried to wear my mimical blue just to even things out a little bit up here, but uh, uh, Wayne, thanks a lot for doing this. I know you're, you're busy, especially on game day, but I uh, want to discuss a few things with you, Wilmot, Junior C, and, and some things out that way. So let, let's start in Wilmot. Sure. How are things setting up for the 2016 summer season? Uh, for Wilmot itself, Matt, I think we're looking at uh, you know another banner season. Last year we uh, we finished the season 14-0 uh, and on paper, and then with, uh, with a couple of uh, things um, off the floor, we ended up with a final 16-0 and record. But I think this year we only lost a couple players, so overall we're we're looking at you know another strong season both our goalies are back uh, most of our offensive guys are back so we're, we're quite excited to get going and uh, we're looking forward to the season uh, talk to me about the the region of lacrosse now we talk about the paris area the kw the waterloo area earlier this week it was announced that the kw kodiaks will now be moving to coburg of course the msl senior a team how do you think that will affect lacrosse uh, up where you guys are? Matt, you know what? Waterloo region is one of those regions that's really thriving in lacrosse with uh, with Cambridge coming in and, and uh, you know, with, with Fergus, uh, Alora just to the north of us, Guelph coming on strong still. And, uh, you know, with Kitchener, you know, at kind of the, the focal point of the Waterloo region, uh, I really think that the Kodiaks moving to Coburg was a, a good move for Kodiak. It's going to revive that uh, association and that franchise, and, and hopefully they do well down there with you know the eastern end of the province. I don't think it's really going to hurt the Waterloo region because there is so much lacrosse, and as we've seen the last couple of years, the Kodiaks have really struggled to, to get local talent, to get fans out to the game. So I think it's going to be uh, maybe a bit of a, a setback um, that there's no senior lacrosse, but I think down the road a couple of years from now, we're going to see senior lacrosse come back to Kitchener. And let's not forget to just put a cap on that. Coburg, I think, still holds the Sealax attendance record. If I'm not mistaken, we went out there for our first annual road trip, I believe, 2013. I, I wish them all the luck, Matt. I think they're in a really good community that's, that's sports-oriented, that, you know, they're thriving for something new and something big, and I think this could be the thing that, you know, puts, puts them over the top. So, so Sealax a couple years ago did the All-Star game up in Wilmot, yep. and, uh, you know, the Cyclops are there full-time now. We talk about the Kodiaks leaving. What about uh, the Cyclops being there, and how has that impacted either your registration or minor registration or lacrosse in general? Up where you guys are. Well, I think I think Paris, uh, you know, is again another another growing community that has a, a huge hockey history, and bringing professional or semi-professional lacrosse into Paris has definitely helped kind of in the Brantford area, and it resonates to Cambridge, which is in the Southern Waterloo region. So I think bringing Southwest into the region. Uh, you know, has really helped the game grow, and, and we're going to see it continue to grow over the next couple years. So people think of Junior C lacrosse and Senior B to a certain extent as well. They expect a line brawl every five seconds and really bad lacrosse. You're, you're involved with both now with Senior B coming up in Wilmot. For, to finish up here, for those at home who maybe haven't seen uh, either, either one, uh, what can they expect up in Wilmot when they come to a game this summer or next year when the Senior Bs come to town? You, you know what, Matt? With the with the Junior C League, I think we've really evolved as a legitimate junior lacrosse league. And when the Senior B team comes to Kitchener in 2017, you know, folks are, are being treated to uh, NLL players, uh, you know, playing in the Senior B League and, and top-notch uh, Junior A graduates who are choosing to play at Senior B at home in Owen Sound, in in uh, in Peterborough, in Six Nations. So, so the quality of lacrosse over the last five to six years has been as good as it's ever been and we can expect it to grow even more as new teams in Kitchener uh, you know come in. Well we thank you very much for your time we're about to get underway uh, here at the Iroquois Lacrosse Arena week number three of the Canadian Lacrosse League comes your way next as we continue on CLAX TV.
It was a winless week two for the Oswegian Demons. However, there's a zero in the loss column on the season for the Durham Turf Dogs. Week three starts now. The back half of the home and home between the Durham Turf Dogs and the Oswegian Demons comes your way next on Sealax TV from the and Demons as they travel to the General Motors Center in Oshawa. I was there to call that one alongside Steven Stamp. I am Matthew Carrick. He is elsewhere here this evening. We've got pregame festivities down on the floor as they start the smoke dance. As the Durham Turf Dogs, the storyline here was uh, the fact that the Durham Turf Dogs were a bit late arriving here. Remember last week, it was the Oswegian Demons that were late arriving. However, a lot later for the Durham Turf Dogs. That's why, if you're on TV side, we were slightly delayed here. About 8.20, expecting our opening face-off here Eastern Standard Time. We check out our players to watch. We start on the Durham side, and we look at who else but Jesse Guerin. Number nine, those long boxers, a lot of hair. Uh, to look at for Jesse Guerin is we haven't seen Jay Priest in a while. Someone had to pick up the slack, but you can see what he's done. The reigning, I believe, most valuable player of the league as he was in there for the Durham Turf Dogs most of the season last year. It took him a while to get here, but uh, now that he has shown up, huge for the Durham Turf Dogs. Ian Martin, a President's Cup winner, eight goals, 14 assists. For his first four games of the season, he's picking up some of the slack. That was lost by Wayne Van Every, Roger Weiss, and Travis Hill. Starting goaltenders for this matchup. We'll get a look first at Ryan Masters, who has been solid so far on this season against the lowest fourth against the Durham Third Dogs as a team due to 33 so far for the first three games. And although the 0-1 record is sitting there for Ryan Masters. On the other side, the Oswegian Demons will look at Jake Lazor, who has actually played some time. He had a pretty good warm-up partner. As you can see there, a youngster down on the floor here at the ILA. Helping him out in three-game ceremonies. It was Chase Martin who got the start last week. But Jake Lazor gets it the other way. Dylan Goddard immediately down the floor. He cut to his wrong side before taking the shot. And Lazor has got his first save out of the way. Finally underway in week number three. A reminder that there is another game which is live as we speak out in Paris as the Southwest Cyclops and the Barry Blizzard do battle here this evening. Keep you abridged of that game as we go through it. And of course, as well as this one here, Turf Dogs and Demons, and there is a turnover at center floor as it's going to be Ashton Jacobs picking up, and he's quickly going to find Chris Atwood off the bench. Black uniforms, red, orange sleeves here for us week, and they start running left to right as we watch it from our broadcast position. The green jerseys with the grayish black shoulders running right to left for the Durham Turf Dogs. A nice pick from Goddard again working to his wrong side. He looks five hole on Lazor who gets the stick down there. Makes the save. Near side now. Chris Atwood takes it over center. Flipped it there quickly for Chansey Johnson who makes his return to Sealax. And we've got a substitution penalty here called by the technical official. As we'll shout out the officials here, Crew Chief Grant Spies, Mel Van Every, and the best name in semi-pro sports, Palmer Fentenhauser. I don't think that's fully what we were sent, but either way, an official out of the Allura era, area, pardon me, we're told by... Wayne Paddock beforehand, and he's been out west refereeing for a little bit, but happy to have him back in the Ontario system. Power play starts up 
for the Turf Dogs as this one hooks out of the stick and goes way high. Stays clear of everything as that was Cody McMahon shooting that one. It got tied up in the corner where the battle is now. Derek Hopcroft sees Wenster Green. And we've got a roughing call in behind the play. Mike Atwood makes his return to the lineup. It's looked like him and Mark Vradenberg got tied up. Atwood with a new face-off twig. Here as well as, not sure if we'll get a look at it here. This is where the whistle was blown as Hopcroft. Working the green. Again, a number of guys making their return to the Canadian Lacrosse League here this evening. Effectively a four on three now as Durham will keep the man up top. It'll be Hogarth as the safety valve. Down to the crease on the correct side this time for Goddard, takes a shot wide. Croak comes over to play for it. Up top for Guerin behind his back. Onto the crease again and Goddard makes it one nothing. Dylan Goddard, a fantastic start. to his season. Has the power play goal and <laughs> bench led by Roger Chrysler and Mouse Henry wanted a much better start from their team than they got in either game. Last year it looks like Josh Wasson and Jesse Guerin will pick up the assists as Guerin, our player to watch tonight, continues His march to the top of the scoreboard. Guerin, around the far side, still in the power play here. A minute 20 remaining in Mike Atwood's. Roughing minor as Mike Triolo is going to come in and capture this rebound in front of Lazor. He takes another one off the shoulder. Guerin back to chase his own shot. And another save from Lazor. Pushes it into the corner. Vradenberg's there. The Demons bench banging their sticks in uh, applause. As Hopcroft down to Guerin, who's now taking the corner. Up top for Hopcroft. That one off the shin guard now of Lazor. Fresh 30 again for Durham as they continue to work the horn. Guerin in the corner, Vradenberg. Hopcroft backpedaling away from the quarterback spot. There's the shot. That one takes a funny hop in front of Mel Van Every. But he saw it all the way as it stayed out. Triolo goes hard on Ashton Jacobs now. Him and Hogarth providing the double team. Almost getting the 10 count as now Elijah Printup has to sprint past the restraining line to beat the five. He sets up shop in the far corner. Passes off. He comes here. A diving attempt from Vaughn Harris. Oh my, Vaughn Harris shorthanded. 18 seconds. He actually got the pass. Well into that set. from, I believe, Elijah Printup, and you can see, beats the double team, cuts underneath. Triolo, and I believe, I wanna say Wasson, but it may have been Mark Farthing on the double team, and it's tied 1-1. No, nope, they're gonna say Ian Martin on the assist. As the Demons have now won the face off and they work down on the half boards. Looking to kill the Mike Atwood penalty. They do as he's back on the floor. Under 11 to play here in the first quarter as Atwood now shovels off to print up who takes the shot. And that one is just gonna go wide as Oswegan shoots it late and picked up by the Demons as they come down. Nodded at once here as Goddard. Oh, he took a huge hit after he dumped that one off to McMahon. And now McNulty can't hang on. Back into it as Goddard again takes the shot. Lazor way out of the cage. Oh, Goddard over the shoulder behind the back. And Lazor gets back into position. May have got a little bit of help there from Kyle Jamison. Jamison has it now. Runs right in front of us on the near side. Gets taken hard into the glass by Goddard. As they come down for Corey Thompson. Diving through Corey Thompson now. Pardon me, that's Jordan Thomas 
the 42 and 62 looking very familiar, very similar, pardon me. Jordan Thomas will wear 62 here tonight for the Demons. Chancey Johnson will wear 28 as they take the Wayne Van Every name played off that jersey, the one that he wore for a number of years here in this building. Hard collision in on the boards and then a big chop as Hopcroft retrieves the ball. He's got the team issue black bucket here today as opposed to the white one he was sporting. Still the huge bl black knee wrap on the right side as Masters to the bench. We're going to get a penalty from down in the corner as Mel Van Every's got his arm up. Got it. Pardon me, gearing up top. In the middle for Hogarth. Takes the shot. Triolo was rushing off the bench. Nearly got it. To the rebound, but it was the Demon player first, and we'll have the whistle as the Demons will go back to the penalty box. <coughs> Looks like Wayne Hill jogging his way over. Second opportunity already for the Durham Turf Dogs on the power play. They've already had a five on three, and that was the issue on Friday. And a little bit on Saturday, too, was the penalties. Oh, off the crossbar from Guerin. That one bounced off the back of Jake Lazor, but the rebound handled by Mike Atwood. He was trying to release his man. Intercepted, though. Here's Wasson over center. Matt Croak down into the corner quickly for, I believe, Max McNulty down there as Guerin now backs away from coverage. Back for Croak, looking to McNulty on the crease, and he couldn't handle the quick stick as it bounces off the glass. 12 on the shot clock as Guerin... Back up top, over the shoulder. Oh, they're working that no-look pass back for Goddard. And he shoots wide. Tom Montour handles it. Works sidestepping his way over the restraining line. Back into the corner now. He's going to shovel off for Vaughn Harris as they come to the near corner. Hogarth stumbles as the ball comes out over the restraining line. They're going to say it was right close. Funkenhauser was there. And made the call. Here's Hopcroft over for Guerin. 48 seconds remain in the power play. Here's Triolo feeds a cutter. And the goal, second power play marker of the game. This one's going to go to Cody McMahon. Game in Paris, 4-1 in favor of the Cyclops. As they have an early lead again, we keep our eye on that. Game, Spencer Tangay with the call of that one. And the Silax YouTube channel to watch that in its entirety. CanadianLacrosse.com is the website. Von Harris winning another faceoff. He one hand cradles the ball into the zone. Looked for Tom Montour who was cutting. Couldn't find him. As now the Demons. Set up, working into the corner. Von Harris is there. Takes up the X position into officials' timeout territory now. The 2-1 lead for the Turf Dogs as the shot comes from Kenny Aaron. Saved by Masters. Rushing over center is Patrick McRory. He takes a chop from Aaron. Stops in front of the Demons bench. And now passes for Joe Wasson over on the near side. He puts the brakes on at the faceoff dot. As they go back over for John St. John. Wasson a wide shot with seven to play. That one will bounce into the bench. And no officials timeout as of yet. As the Demons now bring it into the zone. Here's Mike Atwood. Over for print up. Down into the far corner. Looking five hole on Masters was the shooter. And Masters able to pick it out there. And we've got six and a half to play. As they go near side for Wasson. Wasson into the corner where Guerin is waiting. Up top. Hopcroft on the run. Pass to Triolo. Triolo taking the shot. That caught a piece of... Chris Atwood stick and sent it flying and then print up handled the ball but ran back through the crease and that will take us to 
the officials timeout. Nineteen eleven was the score in Osweet in uh, Durham, pardon me, last week. A game that the Demons came back in, but they were down way too much, way too early. As we'll take a quick look here at some pretty good work being done by Jake Lazor as he found himself out of position and then over the shoulder went back to his right. And we send it now to Spencer Tangay in Paris. 4-1 Southwest Leeds Ferry. And for the Blizzard, that is Shane Scott. Long blast was saved. And now Spanger gets it up. Southwest smartly pulls it out. Gives it to Dance. Dance comes in. But a better save. Even after he got sent to the ground. Dance trying to play defense in the offensive zone. Can't needs to get back. Barry though really can't find a spark and they can't find a goal as it's four to one only one to show for this game so far for barry there's a long blast crowley stands tall once again back inside the iroquois lacrosse arena it's a 2-1 score in favor of the durham turf dogs both of those goals on the power play one from dylan goddard one from cody mcmahon it's matthew carrick inside for week number three on the Canadian Lacrosse League schedule. Again, keeping our eye on the game in Paris to Barry Blizzard in Southwest. It's now 4-1 for Southwest. Spencer Tangay with the call if you're looking for it on YouTube. Mike Miller to the restraining line after the shot the other way. Selax TV 2 if you're looking for that one. We are on Selax TV 1, of course, as Mike Miller tries to catch up to this. Lazor keeping the foot in the crease. Picks that away from the four checker and they dish off to Wayne Hill now. Montour joins the phrase. He jogs in, balls on the near side though as they go for Vaughn Harris. He does pass for Montour. Montour outside, big body battle down there as Triolo covered his man well. Late in the shot clock, it's just passed away into the corner. As here comes Triolo up the near side. Chugging away, using those long strides, trying to pass for Eric Shule. Triolo falls into the corner as Ashton Jacobs was there. Shule thought he had it, but it's still on the turf. And Triolo takes a late bump after being called on the back of Montour. Less than five to play here in period number one. CanadianLacrosse.com schedules stats, standings and scores from the Canadian Lacrosse League 2016 season. Chris Atwood, far side, so far, blue shoes here tonight. So far he hasn't tried to walk, rock rather the team issue or team colored Demon's shoes. He does have the orange gloves though as Durham now brings it over. Rob Clofer quickly into the corner. It goes for Hogarth after a brief stop on the far side. Clover plays this off the glass. Him and St. John collided, and it actually created a bit of a mini hidden ball routine. Trying to put it back for Shule. Nicely to the line from St. John. So he looks to the official for the off-ball slash call. Not coming. As Clover here. Another one off the glass that he hung on to, but couldn't let one rip before the 30-second clock expired. Here comes Mike Miller through the center. A couple whacks. Being taken there from Clofer, or pardon me, Patrick McRory. The 88 as opposed to the 28. Of course, 88, the former number of Derek Hopcroft. Outside shot there from Wayne Hill, goes in, Masters sees that well, and handles it off the chest. You know, Sweet and Demons came into this game without scoring in the final 15 minutes and 11 seconds of their game in Barry on Sunday game that they ended up losing 20 to 16 36 goals and what I'm already calling is game of the year here's Cody McMahon trying to beat the shot clock just rips one from outside Lazor easily saw that and he's going to get the counter attack started and Jacobs over center a sidestep off the wall and the shot coming there from Wenster Green gets caught up in Masters Quick whistle, quick restart. As the Turf Dogs 
Come in a few whacks there from Jacobs on Hopcroft. As they find Vradenberg on the far side. Continues the cycle as it comes back here. Oh, sidearm shot from Croak. He was trying to skip it off the carpet, skipped it off the instep of Montour. Montour now hard on his man on the far side. Sure who that is. As he turns, it looks like it's McNulty now. As his shot goes wide, and this is going to go for the over and back violation. Hopcroft just jogging after the ball. Montour in full sprint as Montour now goes the length of the floor and plays it off the backboards, but there's no one coming out the door to come and meet him. So it'll be an offensive set here just outside of two to play in the first quarter. Von Harris from up top, a huge rip that bounces the length of the floor after hitting the wall. It's a 2-1 score yet again for the Durham Turf Dogs. As they walk in, take a shot, shoulder save made by Lazor. To the boards is Clofer. Up top, John St. John, a bit of give and go there as he cut to the net and couldn't receive. So Clofer have to pick it out of the corner. Triolo, far side, Guerin. Couple picks in front to give Guerin a passing lane. He found Hogarth who took the shot and Lazor wasn't sure where it is, but he covered up. And play continues. Final 90 seconds here of period number one. About 20 minutes to nine Eastern time. Here on the Six Nations Reserve. Of course, game delayed as the Durham Turf Dogs stuck in some traffic as Triolo, a huge swim move there. Now, a bit of a shoulder fake on Wayne Hill. He's going to go straight to the cage, takes the shot, and that one goes off the boards. Goddard heads up there as he ran into the ball, passed into the corner again as it comes up for Cody McMahon. Last minute. So work for Joe Wasson, up top for his brother Josh. Be in the corner for Guerin again, behind his back looking for McMahon. It's out of his reach. Joe for Josh, can't get the shot away, puts the ball down and sprints back to get into a defensive position. Mike Miller, Tom Montour. Montour keeps outside. Passing there, Wenster Green. He goes for Vaughn Harris. Ashton Jacobs is backed out of the fray. Accepts the pass there. His sidearm shot goes off. Looked like maybe the arm of Joel Wasson. As from the outside, the shot goes in. And Masters makes the save. 13 seconds to work with here for the Durham Turf Dogs. 2-1 here. Final possession. Clofer in behind the net. Three seconds. Two as... They try the dive and contact made with Lazor. We're going to have a pile up in the crease here. Underneath everybody is Matt Croak and Hopcroft in there to play Peacemaker as the score after the first period of play. Two to one in favor of the Turf Dogs. Again, both of those goals scored on the power play. We send you to Paris. Once again, Spencer Tangay with the call from the Syllabs Community Center. Plays catch with Dance. Back to Dan Keene to the crease. Dance comes to the near side. Corbett just backpedaling into some safety. Across to Jordan Dance. They need a shot though. Two on the shot clock. The blast not going to get there in time. And now a minor penalty is coming again. This time though it's the Southwest and it's the delay a game penalty. So it'll be Gage Board off a delay game minor against the Southwest Cyclops. And with that, it's the second look of the power play for the Barry Blizzard. 
So Blizzard really need to get something going here for Barry. As Brad MacArthur sends out the power play unit. But it'll be four. So a power play for Barry coming up. They trail 5-1 in Southwest. Trivia time here on Sealax TV 1 in 2013 here at the ILA. The Durham Turf Dogs lost in the playoffs to which team? Tweet us your answer. Of course, that was part of Final Four weekend here. Oh, a massive shot from Chris Atwood on Joe Wasson. I'm not sure how that wasn't a moving pick. As Wasson picks up the pieces, his brother... Mike Atwood had won the faceoff. Huge shot coming off the bench there from Corey Thompson. It rings off the glass. Ten on the shot clock now as it's an interception for Joe Wasson. Three on two as the Turf Dogs come out. Here's Triolo. The shot comes in, and it's wide and played into the corner here. Chancey Johnson with some big wax on Triolo as he gets the shot away. Lazor. Went down low to make the save as Atwood up the floor. Him and Guerin having words as they come through. Hopcroft fell, and that released Tom Montour, who went to the cage and tied the game. First point of the game for Chris Atwood. Same story for Tom Montour. As Atwood to the far side, and Hopcroft following in behind and as we said got caught in the carpet as he tried to catch up with the reigning transition player of the year Tom Montour Harris and Patrick McCrory now to the face off Don it's going to be Harris winning that switching hands to get the shot away down low actually switched hands twice in a matter of a step and a half as here comes Shuel Passes off to Goddard. He bounces hard. Looked like into Wenster Green there as they pass into the corner. Does Durham. Minute and a half gone in the second quarter as that shot goes off of Mo Bissell and up into the screen. So it's going to be Matt Croak with the fresh 30. Corner for Vradenberg. Oh, in front, Hopcroft picked up the rebound, took the shot, and print up came through. Pardon me as he stands up. It's Brett Clofer who now heads to the bench, but credit him for standing in and taking that massive hit. Stolen away by Croak now as they were trying to spring Mo Bissell on the frass break the other way. Guerin into the corner. The cycle is on here as Goddard. He looks for Hogarth, who was in front at the net. Hogarth trying to drag it out, he can't. His teammate does though, gets the shot, and Lazor with the save. Lazor picks it out of midair. Couldn't quite corral it. As here now comes the Demons on a two on one. First save from Master, second one now is Martin in one motion, grabbed the rebound and went back over the, behind the back over the shoulder. Demons still have possession now as they try and spread the floor a little bit. Here's Atwood from outside the fan. Takes the shot. Masters the save. Harris was there. Couldn't pick up the rebound though. So the Turf Dogs will run out into center. Goddard a bit of trouble picking that off the turf. Got quickly to Triolo who now comes into the corner. Triolo passes back again. Working out of the corner. Over the top is Guerin to his wrong side. Giving chase is Mike Miller. This one bounces high off the back glass. Nearly out of play, but John St. John and Chris Atwood come underneath, and it's going to be Atwood winning it and quickly getting to Ken Aaron as both teams make changes. Outside the crease, the bounce shot. Chansey Johnson. That's definitely his first in a couple of years. Actually, I was going to say he hasn't scored, but he did in that championship season for the Iroquois Ironmen. Had a two-goal game, I believe. Forget who it was against, but definitely remember him going down the floor and lowering the shoulder on two separate players, knocking them flat. Chris Atwood loses the faceoff here to Patrick McGrory and then shoves him out of the way. Lazor caught in no man's land as he's way out of the crease. 
And it's going to be Montour winning the loose ball. Lucky there is Lazor went for a bit of a wander. Here's Corey Thompson to the crease. And in the crease was Wenster Green. As the Turf Dogs start to ramp it up a little bit here. Rob Clofer doesn't have it. Where is the ball? It's in the stick of Goddard who now passes to Clofer who's taking up the spot as the far crease man. Did a fantastic job of cutting through a bunch of players. Again, still looking for our trivia answer. Bragging rights on the line here on a Friday night. Eno Sweekin, Jacobs to the far side. Ian Martin, our player to watch. Stutter step, caught on farthing. Then, oh, the corkscrew shot picked up in front by Printup. His second attempt couldn't get through as McNulty now does grab it. And he's going to, I thought, stop at the restraining line, but followed his pass as they got fresh legs off the bench. And his shot eventually... Off of Lazor, up into the screening. Compared to the two games we witnessed last week involving the Demons, this is a much different story. 3-2 score with 10 minutes to play in quarter number two. As Guerin wins the loose ball behind, and a crease violation there as Hogarth was dropped to his knees and skidded through, made contact with Lazor. And Melvin, every call him in the crease, steals it away from print up though. Then another shot here. That one goes off the backboards. And another crease violation against Hogarth as he caught the back end of the crease. Lazor from his own net gets it up quickly to Chris Atwood. Atwood at the face-off circle in the offensive zone. It comes up top. The bench wanting an interference call as their man was dropped for the Turf Dogs. Shot still managed to find its way through, though. Masters with the save and the outlet pass looking for Triolo. Played off the glass as Triolo lifted it over the net. Lazor was there for the save. Here's... Atwood, sidearm shot. We've got a couple uh, fisticuff matches over in Paris as they should be later in their game, third quarter. As, again, we were a bit late, late started here. We're in the second corner. Well, they are also in the second quarter, so a slight delay down there as well. Starting, we understand. Cody McMahon up top. As we get back here, eight seconds on the shot clock, he just lifts one over the crowd, gets caught under the right arm of Lazor. Wenster Green runs up. He's going to switch to the far side, switch his hands in the process, and now passes into the corner as they start the cycle, works back to the near side for Tom Montour. Wearing the C this year, gets a step on Shul, then dives through the crease, made contact with Masters, and Shul looks to Grant Spies, who says no. Far side is where Montour is now. Pardon me, no, he's in the corner as Montour again tries the dive. And again, Shuo looks at Grant Spies. This time the crease violation was called as it was Hopcroft losing the step on Montour. Hopcroft has it now as Wayne Hill continues to pressure him after he passed it away. John St. John, a fantastic season with the Toronto Beaches this year. Gives to Triolo, a former member of the Beaches, as his shot goes off the dasher and up into the rafters. Kenny Aaron bounces it over to print up. Up top for Atwood. Atwood for Vaughn Harris as Harris cuts through the double team and lost the ball but picked out of midair by Atwood and Chris Atwood got the shot away. It was saved by Masters, and here comes John St. John here in front of us with speed. Had McNulty with him. Goes for Hogarth. Oh, what a save from Lazor reaching back with a right hand as Hogarth stayed out of the crease that time. Here's Harris. Harris 
in the middle for Jordan Thomas. He rifles a hard shot off the back glass. It's a backhand shovel pass, though, from Hogarth. Up for Vradenberg. Two on two. Vradenberg and Guerin. As Guerin's going to hang on. Right on top of the Village Pizza and Wings logo here at the ILA. Goddard comes off the bench to accept the pass as there's six and a half to play in period number two. Officials timeout territory with a pretty good stretch of play here as Wayne Hill comes off the bench, gives for Ian Martin. His corkscrew shot finds a bit of the pipe, a bit of the arm of Masters, and it's a three on two for Durham. And they gain 30 feet as the man pops out the front door and the pass into the midsection of Guerin, who fell, rolled through the crease, and that's going to cost him about 80 to 100 feet here as he's way behind the play. Ian Martin with it. Guerin just now catching up at the restraining line as here's Elijah Print up. Demons in their own zone taking the opportunity to switch a couple players here. As the ball gets down to the crease, man, Ian Martin has the chin strap pop off the helmet. No one's realized it yet as Corey Thomas now has to take a shot. That into the corner, and that'll give us a number of whistles as we will take the officials' timeout. 3-2 is the score here. We told you things were getting chippy out in Paris. We'll send you there now. Spencer Tange once again with the call. Scott gives it to Teeter. Modsley runs through the middle off the bench, causing havoc in front of Crowley. Long blast coming. He fakes it rather instead to Mosley, but he gets sent to the floor. Big hit coming in front of Grant Crowley. Not too much time on the shot clock there. That's a late shot coming from Michael Teeter, but no call. Southwest back the other way. They score. Transition goal. And now it's 7-1 for the Southwest Cyclops. So with that, this is becoming a blowout here at home for the Southwest Cyclops. They make it a 7-1 game. They only put up six on Sunday at the Meridian Center. They've already got seven and we're not even through. The 7-1 score out there. Thank you, Spencer. As Ian Martin, look at the stick skills there and a great save by Ryan Masters. That was earlier. Southwest Cyclops. Seven straight now as Brady Hesseltine with a pair. Jordan Dance continues his assault of the Canadian Lacrosse League in his return. Three points, including two goals. Four points, actually. As it's Cody Ward from Connor Daly as the score sheet updates. Triolo all the way to the face-off line to play that one that bounced off the back glass. Now stepping in is Hogarth. Effectively a four-on-four four as there's a pair of players back near the faceoff dot. Von Harris and I believe Josh Wasson. Harris is going to get it now as the Demons came in. Harris, oh, reaching for it, almost getting drilled. There was Wenster Green as Green forced to retreat. Harris gets a step on McMahon, goes through, takes the shot, masters the save. It'll be a reset. Von Harris still in the crease. Now he rolls away. As Atwood gets it back up top. Here's Atwood coming in again. That little delayed shot that he's got. Looked like he was faking like he was going to go high. And actually did open the five hole a little bit. But a nice recovery from Masters. No recovery needed there. As Ashton Jacobs shoots wide. Triolo with the rebound. He drew a quadruple team though as Corey Thompson. Shoots it over his shoulder. It was wide. Masters came out to play for it. Oh, stones Atwood as he reaches out with the stick. What a save made by Ryan Masters. That could be the Arby's play of the week for the Durham Turf Dogs. Check their, check their Facebook page as they nominate their player of the game, the Durham Turf Dogs. Here's McNulty. Goes to the far side, backing out. It comes back for McNulty again, who fires and scores. How big is that save now? Goal from Jeff McNulty. Three fifty-six on the clock. Here's Thompson, you can see it. 
get away from Atwood. Thompson stays with it as it came off the stick of Masters. And another look at the stick as he came and made the save as it's just a huge outside shot from McNulty. Early movement on the faceoff from Patrick McRory. But that's, for my money, a two-goal swing, which ties it up here at three. McNulty from Hopcroft. As it's played by Shule. He was looking to pass up to the near side, and Montour intercepts right at center. Stutter step and a cut back, and now a cut back to the near side for Montour. Still has it in front. Oh, Shule takes that one off the bucket from Winster Green. And Shule, oh, he's hurting. Doubles over a bit now. He's going to stay on the floor a long way from home here in the long defensive change quarter. Trainer getting ready for his arrival as the shot goes in. Save made. Shule now slowly jogging his way off the floor as McMahon and Goddard, though, they've got a two-on-one. Goddard sets the pick. McMahon shoots around it and scores on the five-hole. Cody McMahon's got two in this game already. And at least it looks like... Looks like... Shule... Just taking a minute as McMahon on the bench now with his second. This is after the interception. Goddard sets the pick on Jamison. And you can see how much room they had. Nobody inside the restraining line. Grant Crawley is in net for the Southwest Cyclops. And according to Spencer Tange, our reporter in the field, he has been unreal. 8-1. And reigning league MVP Angus Dinley gets the hook in his return to the league. Welcome back, Angus Dinley. Goodness. Although, remember, in his return last year, or two years ago, pardon me, it was in this building where it was also not a great performance. And that kick started something special for the Barry Blizzard. Good season for the Southwest Cyclops this year. Great one for the Durham Turf Dogs as they sit 3-0. Down 4-3 here, though, just outside of two minutes to play in period number two. So here comes Gearin. Pardon me, up 4-3 off that most recent goal from McMahon. Diving shot attempt. That one goes off the shoulder of Lazor. McNulty can't play the rebound. He's going to stay on his man, though. I believe that's Ian Martin. Martin able to shovel it away. Chancey Johnson, it comes back for Von Harris. He misplays it, pops out the back door again, and Guerin quick on him. They both fall in on the boards as Mike Miller digs at it. He's got McNulty in his back pocket as it rolls straight to Guerin, who picks up Atwood on the floor with a yellow-headed twig now. I think that's the first time we've seen that one here tonight. Johnson looked like he gave a forearm to Triolo, after he took that shot, and they both part ways. As Corey Thompson down the near side. Montour sidesteps his way in and rips a bomb <laughs> over five bodies. Tom Montour with his second. You can see what he's done this season. Nine points already. Through just three games, once again, the reigning transition player of the league, which is the one that everybody wants in this league. Is classified as a transition league. As the faceoff, again, Mike Atwood spins away from a check, flying in off the restraining line. Chris Atwood gave a hard one there to Patrick McRory. As Atwood shovels away to Montour, he's done his job, so he... Jogs off and he'll let the offensive boys go to work here. Mo Bissell chased all the way up to the restraining line by two defenders. That opens it down low for Jeremy Thomas. And Montour gets another rip looking top corner. And that's taken away by the left shoulder of Masters. And Joe Watson. Here's McMahon ripping a shot. Lazor sees that one roll into the corner with 35 seconds. McMahon waits. Thought he looked like he was waiting for 30 seconds on the shot clock. Or on the game clock, rather. There's about six seconds separating that and the shot clock. Game clock ahead at this point as McMahon slows it down. 
They will not go two for one here. They'll just take as much time away from the Demons' possession as they can. Off the wall, Goddard was cutting in on the near side, trying to find him. It skips off a body, and it's going to be a breakaway for Chris Atwood, but he can't handle the bounce pass. Can't corral it the second time. Five seconds on the game clock, no timeout called yet. And Mo Bissell, a nice play there by Joe Wasson. How about another great play? Looked like Shuel back on the floor, posturing up in front of Ian Martin. And that will end the first half. A 4-4 tie score in favor of nobody, pardon me. <laughs> As we are at halftime, knotted up. Again, a far cry from either score the Demons saw last week. They were blown out in Durham at halftime, and they were handing it to the Barry Blizzard at halftime. So if you're watching that game in Paris... Worry not as Barry came back big time. We'll take a quick timeout to send you back to Paris on the other side of this break. Spencer Tangay again with the call. Matthew Carrick inside the ILA, not at its fours at halftime. Back live inside the Iroquois Lacrosse Arena. 4-4 score after one half of play. A goal fest out in Paris, but how about the play of Ryan Masters in that first period? Got caught a little scrambly on Corey Thompson and then absolutely nails, robs Chris Atwood on the crease and it led to this the other way. Jeff McNulty setting things up. Gets it up top, shoots through a crowd and through Lazor. So far, our play of the game for the Durham Turf Dogs. That's saved by Masters, coupled by the goal back the other way. Once again, our Sealax trivia in 2013 here at the ILA, part of Final Four weekend. The Durham Turf Dogs lost in the playoffs to which team? Looking for your answer on Twitter at JVI Video for us at Sealax League. And of course, that's where you can let us know about your three star selections as well. Use the hashtag three stars for that. And if you're answering the trivia question, use the hashtag Sealax Trivia. Asking you shall receive three stars of the game. Are the goaltenders on your list? Two goal performance for Cody McMahon. Pair for Tom Montour so far and just a sprinkling of other points 
across the score sheet. So take your pick. I mean, we do have another half to go. Oh, waiting for one of the Bantam girls to clear the Durham bench as they put on a pretty good show here at halftime, getting set for their 2016 box season. Matthew Carrick inside the Iroquois Lacrosse Arena, week number three. Canadian Lacrosse League coming to you on Sealax TV 1. Spencer Tange on Sealax TV 2 is the first shot. Goes in on Masters again. Masters controls the net to our left. And Jake Lazor still in there in the net to our right. To start period number three. They'll switch one final time as we go to quarter number four. Out of the corner is Gear and looking for the cutter. And that one intercepted. Waiting for the timing play to get the man out the front door. And the guy heading off took a bit too long to get Chris Atwood. But he was chomping at the bit. Chase Atwood had to hold him back. Here's Guerin. Works into the corner for, I believe, Josh Wasson. This comes back up for Jeff McNulty. His shot bounces off the carpet, off the glass. It is Wasson as he runs under it. Goes straight to the cage, and his shot goes wide with 10 on the clock. Into the cage. Oh, huge knock there between Kyle Jamison and Ashton Jacobs. One of those took the ball free from John St. John. Still gets the shot away. Lazor still manages the save. <coughs> And a parting shot from Jamison. As Chris Atwood works back down the other way. Oh, Corey Thompson. Real deceptive move there on that pass. Everyone thought he still had it as Chris Atwood walked straight to the net. And we're way loose as Atwood comes up. He's tied up with somebody as they shove. As he's been his usual in-your-face self here this evening. Not much to show for it yet on the score sheet as Mike Miller takes a shot. Masters with the save up into the screening. And Miller will get a second opportunity with a fresh shot clock. Quickly order for Jordan Thomas. Thomas sideways past the faceoff circle. Now he goes to the top. No one there, so he passes far side. Chancey Johnson can't hang on. Retreats to the half boards. Passes for Mike Miller. This one finds green as well as Miller can't pick up. It's going to be Joe Wasson. Flipping it to McNulty, and they'll work the timing play straight to the front door. Hogarth the shot, and that one bounds off the pads. And Lazor made the save before it popped up out of the stick of Hogarth into the screen. And the Demons in front of the Demon mascot and a couple of young fans. They break into the zone. Huge chop there. On Wenster Green, he gives it off to Montour. Into the face of Vradenberg was, I believe, Vaughn Harris. And that was enough to take Vradenberg out of his spot and hand the ball over to Durham. Oh, what an adjustment in midair. Not sure who it was for the Turf Dogs, but they've broken the deadlock two minutes in. Mark Vradenberg, as he gets up that right knee wrapped for Vradenberg, sets the pick. No, sorry, it's not Vradenberg, it's the cutter. As Garen's gonna pick up another point. Hogarth from Guerin. Guerin's been among the leaders in Offensive Player of the Week so far in the first two weeks as Oswee can win the faceoff led by Mike Atwood. A rare offensive shift for him as he stays out. <coughs> but Jordan Dance putting on a show out in Paris, making himself an early candidate. The only two games on the schedule in week number three. So get your votes in after tonight. The dive in there. Masters took a bump and then looked back into the face of Wayne Hill. Shot came from the near side. He still made the save and it finds its way to Corey Thompson who will slow things down. Here's Chris Atwood. Shul on him. Oh, <laughs> cheeky little dump shot 
as he was running by from Atwood. Was looking for the pass, but now he's going to peel off to the bench as Thomas controls it on the near side. Second unit on the floor now. For the Demons as Ian Martin backs away. Off the bench. Oh, the shot off the pipe and in. May have hit something on the way through for Wenster Green. Couple appearances in a number of different NLL camps. Over the past few seasons, he was up in Barrie for a little bit. He was on the Iroquois Ironmen. And now Wenster Green, a member of the Oswegian Demons, has the goal here that ties things up at five. Harris wanted a violation called there against Patrick McRory. None upcoming. So the Turf Dogs will get a shot here. McRory to the crease. Goddard found him. And he passes off for Shuel. The cycle working the far side. Comes back for Goddard again. Goddard's going to step to the fan. Vredenberg spun off coverage. Couldn't handle the pass. Shot clock down to six seconds here as it's shoveled out in front. Again, out of the reach of Goddard. Matt, Matt Giles is going to want more sound stick work in the offensive zone, I would think, after that shift. As Vredenberg is going to go after Harris here, walking off the fence. Oh. Shot got into the legs of Masters. He hung on for the whistle, but as he stood up, it was right close to the line. Definitely not over. Grant Spees was right there. Goes up for John St. John, Jesse Guerin. Jeff McNulty backs away. Ten on the clock as Guerin gets it back up top. Back for McNulty, who walks out of the corner. Oh, rings that one off the leg, it looked like. May have been Ashton Jacobs, not sure. Still not sure as everybody rushes off. Corey Tom, or pardon me, Jordan Thomas maybe. The maroon bucket of Jordan Thomas. We've got a penalty coming here as Montour picks it up. Shule had dropped the pass, drew the triple team, and somehow the Demons come away with the penalty. It's going to be the slash to Corey Thompson. As Thompson slams the door in disgust, 9.07 play. Tied at five. There it is. As Shuel thought that he was the culprit. Credit to Shuel for coming back on the floor. We saw him take that shot off the helmet. So good on him for remaining in the game. Guerin up top again, already down to 15 in the shot clock as they've just passed around outside. They work it down low. Josh Wasson gets an opportunity, but Lazor saves that one back up top for Guerin again. Goddard, Guerin, Wasson. All three top men. McNulty clearing out down low, but the shot goes wide, and Lazor trying to lift this one over top of everyone to find Montour, who had struck out. Struck out of the pack, rather. And that one up into the rafters, and it'll be turf dog ball. Minute 15 remaining in the penalty as Cody McMahon takes to the floor. Looking for the hat trick here. Up top for Hopcroft. Hopcroft and McMahon, they continue to pass up top. The site goes on on the far side. Hopcroft drops down. Saw that pass bounce off a of body. Gets it back. Here's Triolo coming out of the corner. Takes a shot. Lazor sends the rebound into the near side corner. McMahon there first. Him and Hopcroft again start to pass up. And again, Triolo walks out of the corner. Gives for Hopcroft to McMahon. As they quickly pass it. In front was Triolo. And he let that go for Hogarth, who wasn't ready. As there's 10 on the clock now. McMahon took a little bit off the corkscrew shot. Lazor managed to save that. McNulty. Got in there to make the save. Pardon me, it looks like Vradenberg has crept down to the crease. And McNulty's on the far side crease. Gets it now. Sorry, that's Hogarth. 
as they're facing us up here in the booth and we're trying to call it based on what knee brace these guys wear. That was Hogarth on that attempt as Triolo now gets for Tom Montour as we go back to five on five. Nice job of holding up there from Triolo to not draw the penalty as he was on the back of Montour. Montour to the far side. Comes back for Von Harris. Harris took a bump as he took the shot. It went wide though. And there's two on it as they tried to find Mike Miller for the quick stick. And it wasn't upcoming, so we get the officials' timeout. Off the loose ball. Take a quick timeout. We believe they're still at halftime in Paris, so we'll be right back after this quick timeout. You are watching week three action in the Canyon Crossing. of the Southwest Fight Club. Battle continues along the far wall. Patton trying to just kick it loose. It finally comes out and Cody Ward who has two short-handed markers gonna jump in on the rush. Maybe he's one of your three-star selections tonight. We'll be sure to announce our three-star selections. You could tweet us your three stars. Sealax. Be sure to tweet in Tweet in your favorite three-star selection for tonight's game, and we'll get to those following the final buzzer here from, from a Silaps tonight. Cody Ward with possession, running down on the near side for the Southwest Cyclops. Back inside the Iroquois Lacrosse Arena, back in net in Paris. Angus Steinle, our thanks to Spencer Tangay. 2013 ILA, the Durham Turf Dogs lost to who? It was Angus Dinley getting the win for the Toronto Shooting Stars. Actually, pardon me, Gary Muzzin picked up the win in that game according to Point Streak. For Angus Dinley's team, the Toronto Shooting Stars. Dinley signed by the Philadelphia Wings late in that season. Actually, two days after a bench-clearing brawl against the Brampton Inferno, which he was suspended one day, the only day that he remained in Sealax before making his debut with Barry two seasons later. Back underway here, Corey Thompson in the face of Ryan Masters. Masters went with him and made the left arm save. 6.05 to play in quarter number three. 5.5 five is the score. A tight one here at the ILA, not so out in Barry. 11-3. It is now 11-4 as we're being told Barry scored another goal as they try and put a run together. Speaking of scoring, there's Durham. In on the crease, Jeff McNulty has got his second of the game. Our apologies to anyone listening to the game that didn't see that. We'll get a... Another look here, and we'll try and call it for you. A bit of a flip pass from the far side. McNulty, tiny bit of give and go as the righties passed amongst themselves. He's straight cut through the middle, and a good goal. In on Jake Lazor, 6-5 now is the score as Harris. Oh, that one may have hit the shoulder of Clofer before going high off the black back glass. The clear back glass, not the black glass. That would be less than comfortable to sit behind. Vaughn Harris in, in the middle takes the sidearm shot. Masters with that save. Rebound rolls right to Rob Clofer. As he's going to pass to the front door just in time for Triolo to come out. Mike Triolo giving for Goddard. As Goddard here keeping to the outside. Still keeping, now passing through, and that shot from the far side went wide, picked up by Hogarth on the rebound, tried to stay out of the crease, couldn't, lost the ball before he stepped in, though, and the Demons come down. Montour looking to go coast to coast. Nice job defensively, but off the bench is Thomas, and Thomas comes in, takes a shot, masters the save. 
He works into the corner. Jordan Thomas. Up top, Johnson with the shot. Chancey saved there as Mike Miller on his horse to get back to the front door, and he stops the rush from Derek Hopcroft. Farthing from the restraining line. He goes for Wasson, who sends it for his brother Joe on the far side. That one up at our level, way down in the stands. And a bit of a surprise one that made its way up there. I hope everyone is all right down there. Here's Atwood. Chris into the corner. Passing back for big brother Mike. Heads up here in our booth. Heads up Alex and Jeremy Hogle as they're our technical crew. Alongside Hayden Gerson and Gary Morrison. <laughs> Getting word that they're still there. John St. John back for Guerin again. Huge cycle on now as Hopcroft down for Guerin. Guerin, whoa, made it look like he was going over the top on Jamison and then a chop from John St. John on Jamison. He was the one asking for the call earlier and now he's gonna get one as John St. John took the chop. Extra attacker on as Jake Lazor beat a couple of his line mates to the bench. His Montour now will head off. Man up line out there for the Demons is Atwood. He sees Masters slide to his right. Masters falls back now on the rebound. Stoning Chris Atwood twice in tight. Frustrating night for Chris Atwood, but it'll be a power play as John St. John will go off for the slash. They'll actually call it interference. As watch it come on the crease. Right here, the man circling the crease. And oh, yeah, it is the stick on Lazor. Palmer Funkenhauser whistles play in. As it works down into the corner. Here's Vaughn Harris. Ian Martin picks up. Fresh 30 now for the Demons as they work. Everyone around the horn, Atwood from up top, takes a shot in that one up into the screening, rattled around there for a bit, does stay on the playing surface. Von Harris up for Atwood. Martin faked the quick stick on the crease. All righties have touched it now. They get the last two lefties in, as here's Atwood taking the shot, and that's saved by the right leg of Masters, and Atwood off the pipe as he cut through the middle. One of the Demons players has cut through the crease here. Still hasn't touched it. Atwood and Shewall exchanging words as the ball's gonna be brought out by the Turf Dogs though. Atwood will stay down the floor, so effectively a four on three in favor of the Demons. And the huge soup spoon of Lazor pounces on that. As the Demons and Turf Dog players will now come back to meet Shewall and Atwood. Harris, Chris Atwood into the corner. Ian Martin, here's Atwood again up top. Quick passing as Harris works into the middle. Picked out of the crease by Martin. Over to the far side for Jamison. Jamison finds Martin walking into the middle again. And Atwood picked up the rebound and shot quickly as he had Jesse Guerin right in his face. Maybe that's the one that gets Chris Atwood going here in this game. Just the second point that we've got him for. You can see already 10 through two games as he was on a career seven point pace through roughly the halfway point of the season last year. It has dipped slightly, but still dangerous is Chris Atwood. One straight back by Mike Atwood, straight to Montour who came racing off the Restraining line off the faceoff. He ripped a shot that bounced in front of Masters over him. And off the back glass into the rafters here. So here comes Josh Wasson chased to the boards by Montour. As McNulty. Plays it to the half boards for McMahon. He tried to cut through. Lost the ball, but it's picked up quickly and scores by Matt Croak.
He's at the first goal of the season for Matt Croak. Nobody asked for the ball, so it's possible he scored earlier this season. But just a heads up play here. Croak saw his defender cut through and race trace raced straight to the rebound, pardon me, as it looked like Montour thought he had a loose ball and a fast break, and that opened the door for Croak. Here's Atwood. He's got Joe Wassett on him. He passes to Elijah Printup. Atwood to the crease. Printup to the wall. Beats Rob Clofer. Goes to the crease. Passes off, though. Jamison wide open. Can't hang on as there's 15 on the shot clock. Wayne Hill scores. Bit of a mini run now to tie things up at seven here for the Oswegian Demons. Director of Player Personnel. You can see some of the chuckles down there. That was the same green that I was just flashed. Oh, what a shot from Wayne Hill from uh, Mr. Garland up here. Vaughn Harris couldn't hang on to the faceoff, so Mike Triolo. Oh, a swim move over top of two Demons players. Still comes away with the ball, though, was Mike Triolo. Comes over to the near side. 25 seconds for Cody McMahon to work. He goes to Triolo. Cutting through the middle is McMahon. Takes the shot. It bounces off a Demons player and goes back into the crease. Lazor corrals it. Now there's 15 for the Demons to work. Montour up for Martin. He's got Winster Green in front. He took a bit off the shot. Martin, the shot, and Masters falls backwards into the net, and he says he's got it trapped in his hand or on his pad, but pretty much his whole upper body's in the net. And I think he's stuck now. Yeah, the net, <laughs> the face mask has been tied up. Masters, you can see, doesn't like that call as he... Giving it to Grant Spies, who's lined up for the faceoff, but this is an interesting one here as Masters, his entire body fell back into the crease. The shot from Winster Green, Ian Martin, our player to watch on the crease. It's back in the glove, and yeah, it looks like it's there when he goes, and then he repositions. So Ian Martin, our player to watch on the goal as we go back to the faceoff dot. Mo Bissell and Wenster Green on the assists. Face off just rolls harmlessly to the near boards. And third quarter is done. Masters will have another word with Spies as he goes over to change sides. And we'll send it to Spencer Tange in Paris. 8-7 after three here at the ILA. <laughs> Let us know who you think the three stars of the game should be. Tweet us at JVI Video, at CLAX League, your first, second, and third star. 
as it's an 8-7 score here inside the Iroquois Lacrosse Arena out in Paris. We can't tell you they're also at the officials' timeout in the third quarter. That's why we could not go to them as the save made by Ryan Masters. It's had a fantastic game, but now the net to our left will be controlled by Jake Lazor. Masters down to the net to our right. The configuration, they started this game what seems like a very long time ago. We can tell you, out in Paris, Angus Donnelly back in net. It's a 12-4 lead now for the Southwest Cyclops as Gage Board. A lot of roughing calls in that game. It may be a little spicy out in Paris as we encourage you to hit up Sealax TV 2 at the conclusion of this game. Or get your smart TV going, your smart tablet, your smart phone, your smart refrigerator. Anything with a screen. One of these days we're going to have six games going on at the same time. Off the backboard straight to Atwood. He just shoveled a shot in. Masters is covered up and it's going to be a crease violation as Atwood tried to get it. And Masters in the ear of Mel Van Every now. Here's Hopcroft on the near side. They've got one late man coming off the bench. It's going to be Vradenberg going straight to the middle. However, the ball goes to Garen, who took a wide shot, went off the backboards. Hopcroft to the far side on the crease. The shot and a nice save made by Lazor. Hopcroft dumped hard in on the boards. He gets up a little slowly as it was Kyle Jamison and Hopcroft with a few words for Jamison. They still continue to discuss as Croak goes around the horn into the corner. Back for Hopcroft. You think he's fired up about that hit? And he's yelling across the floor back for Jamison as there was all that and a bag of chips on the shot from Derek Hopcroft. Here's Hopcroft getting hit into the corner boards and took a huge bump and <laughs> takes his frustration out on the back of the net. Lazor wanted no part of that one. And then stared across the floor and had a screaming match with Kyle Jamison. Whoa, over the shoulder. Back down in the zone to our right after Mike Atwood. Surprise, surprise, wins the faceoff. 13 and a half to play here in quarter number four as Rob Clofer is in front of us now. There's a turf dogs control. Holgarth diving through. Drew the penalty on Wayne Hill, I think, from behind. And Hogarth, this is becoming a trademark Thomas Hogarth goal. As he scored a couple like this, going to the crease, drawing the penalty, diving towards the net, or sliding on his knees in the direction of the net, I think is more appropriate. And that makes the score 9-8. We've been tight all night long. And yeah, it's just his momentum as he gets hit. Drops down to the knees. So he makes sure he stays out of the crease. Gets the shot and the goal from Hopcroft. Von Harris this time winning the faceoff. He goes in on ho, Shuel. Patrick McCrory from behind. The Paul Bunyan-esque chop this time. He's going to go for that one as we hit exactly 13 to play in regulation. Atwood from the restraining line. Down in the corner, six Demon jerseys in the offensive zone now. So that one off the turf, off the boards, and then off the rafters again. And we will get the slashing call to Patrick McRory. And he's upset about the call, but could hear that one in the parking lot. I'm not entirely sure what the issue is. So Atwood will quarterback here. Gets the lefties working first. Now it's back to Atwood. Down to the crease man as they bypass Mo Bissell. No. Again, Roger Weiss, Wayne Van Every, Travis Hill. No Tory Van Every in tonight. 
as he would normally be on that crease on the power play. This one skips off the back glass. A rising shot from Atwood out of the reach of Bissell. Lazor leaves it in the corner. Guerin picked up quickly right on the crease and they want him to back up out into the corner. Although we did see the Demons get a restart like that maybe last year or the year before in on Angus Dinley that he was hot about as Chop in on Guerin. And did that one get caught in the stick? Not sure what the play was there, but Matt Giles screaming over on the bench. Here's Atwood. Shot comes in, that one looked like off Masters before going up into the rafters. And Atwood looked to pass to Montour, but he wasn't there as he went streaking to the bench in favor of Vaughn Harris. Harris now joins the play back up top for Atwood. First half, the power play gone now for the Demons as they get back to Atwood up top. Vaughn Harris from the shooting spot, just inside the fan, rips one off the leg pad of Masters. Big collision on the boards there between Ian Martin and Thomas Hogarth. Back for Atwood as Martin won the ball. Wayne Hill in front, spins away to Vaughn Harris off the stick of Hogarth, off the body of Guerin and down in front of Masters. He corrals. Here comes Guerin into the corner for Clofer. Rob Clofer. Far side corner. Bit of a push there from behind. The turf dogs up by one still as there's just less than 11 minutes to play. Double team there from McMahon as he got taken down after losing the ball. Again, Kyle Jamison in about the same spot him and Hogarth got tangled and Rob Clofer and Ian Martin get tied up here and they go down and the arm of Grant Spies goes up as him and Jonas Dirks discuss where they're going after the game. Here's Chris Atwood off the glass. He's gonna race across the restraining line to win it back and two on the shot clock as Chancey Johnson just rips a shot. And the shot clock will sound. Rob Clofer will go off for a hold. And just as the Demons go back to five on five, it will now be a five on four in favor of the Demons. Jonas Dirks as we watch that one again up here in the booth. As that was the penalty call. They were a bit tangled and there was the hook of the shoulder. But was that a roll of Clover or a roll of the good defensive play on the arm earlier? Masters all the way up the floor looking to start a counterattack. Miscommunication between Montour and Lazor as it was momentarily up for grabs. Montour did take though, went up for Winster Green and now they slow the play down in the corner for Atwood. I imagine there's a switch coming at some point as Montour no looks it into the near corner back for Harris who cut through. And maybe the Turf Dogs were looking for that as well as it'll be a power play goal for Vaughn Harris. A shorthanded marker earlier. He's got the power play one now here. And nine and a half to play. We're knotted at nine. Just the cycle play is on. You can see the three turf dog players right around Harris as there was a lot of attention down low paid to Chris Atwood in the corner. CLX to come back up. Outside, a lot of room for Cody McMahon to shoot before Jordan Thomas stepped up. Here's Triolo for Josh Wasson. Back for Goddard again. Triolo tried to play that one off the glass. It bounces straight to Mike Miller, though. As Miller comes over the timeline, he's now held up in the neutral zone by Joe Wasson, who gets away. How about the back check there from Wasson? Swinging the stick, 
And now Masters out of his net to throw the moving pick. And it'll be Demon's ball down deep as a couple De Turf Dog players, pardon me, head off to the bench. 8.40 to play. Quarter number four, tied at nines as the shot rings off Masters. It'll be called a tip as it rolls the length of the floor. Out for Jake Lazor Clofer. You could see the saucer eyes as he thought about laying out Lazor, but with Tom Montour in the area, he likes to come back on D. Montour and Clofer collide again as Montour walks straight to the net, takes the shot. A bit of a late bump there for Montour as Masters made the save. Turf Dogs coming down into the zone. Pass comes to Triolo near side. Backs away from the fan. Back to the cutter. Another little pick there from Matt Croak. And ball's going to come all the way up. A nice hustle play there from John St. John to corral it. Rips the shot to beat the shot clock as Ian Martin corrals the rebound. Quick up for Vaughn Harris. But there's a defender back, and it gets around Hopcroft. And in past Masters. And the Demons have taken the lead again. Vaughn Harris is third of the game. And he's come alive here of late. They've just hit the end of the third quarter. 14-6. Southwest leads Barry out at the Syllabs Community Center. That one dragging on, but it sounds like it's got some spice and some action to it. Again, Spencer Tange with the call there. His Masters makes the save off the Demons as they got the face-off win. Yet again, and back down Vradenberg on the crease. Printup can't get there in time as Vradenberg ties it at 10. just picked up the rebound after the save from Lazor. And put it in all alone. Cody McMahon looking hat trick. Tries to bounce it five hole on Lazor. And the stick is there. How did McMahon get behind everybody that much? Goodness. <laughs> Into the corner for Jordan Thompson. Thomas. I hear Paris is nice this time of year. We will send you there at the officials timeout and if they're still going when we're done as the bench screams for a hold Winster Green in the area of Mike Triolo we will stay on air to give you the finale from Paris assuming we have time Hopcroft up top to Croak off the half boards they run Shin. Here's Hopcroft. Stays out of the crease. Leaps the hurdle. Takes the shot. Lazor maintains composure to make the save. Hogarth to McMahon for Gearin. Croak. Hopcroft. Hopcroft for Gearin, who's snuck down low with the shot and his own rebound. Here comes Hopcroft. Bounces off a couple players. Ashton Jacobs bats the stick out of the hands of Hopcroft, and it's going to roll them on tour, who will now get. The rush started the other way. Trailer is Atwood who scores. <laughs> and Kyle Jamison, the length of the floor to pat his goaltender on the head, made the save on Hopcroft. And it goes down the floor. Here's Montour. Over for Atwood, and in one motion, brings it back, takes the shot. And just like that, the Demons have the lead again, 11-10. Crowd starting to get into it here at the ILA. What a clean win there for Mike Atwood. As he just watched brother Chris do his thing. Mike Atwood now flips for print up. 
Mo Bissell with room to shoot, takes the shot, Masters to his right, got the stick on it. Keeps it out of the net. Up the near side, Vradenberg now cuts back as he meets his 19 counterpart, Mo Bissell. Bissell chases him right in front of the Demon bench, now into the corner. Guerin backpedaling. Triolo from the faceoff dot. Backs into Atwood, then goes under the bridge. And there's a shot in there, Lazor makes the save. And it's picked out of the crease by Kyle Jamison. Five to play in regulation time. Elijah Print up. Bounce shot to the far side. Mike Miller races up over center. Here's Miller stopping at the restraining line. Back for Chansey Johnson to the far side. Down in the corner. Wheeling around up top. Corey Thompson takes the shot. Masters down low makes the save. And that will be the official's timeout. It is 14 to 6 at the Silaps Community Center. Spencer Tange has the call on Silax TV. Channel 2. Harris in the winter. I hear it's nice. Joel Furman, the official ordered, delay a game. So, with exactly 12 minutes, 30 seconds remaining here in the fourth quarter, a full one minute and 18 seconds, five on three opportunity, with another two minute penalty. Here is our play of the game. It's the interception there, the stoning of Chris Atwood, a huge moment in the game that Masters made the save. And of course, we have to pair that with the goal that goes back down the other way, a two goal swing. But at this point, at this point, it's now Jake Lazor, who's done pretty much the same thing on Derek Hopcroft. That results in a goal back the other way for Chris Atwood. And it's an 11 to 10 score inside the Iroquois Lacrosse Arena. Six Nations Bantam girls saluting Good the crowd. They were on the floor at halftime. Our three stars of the game tweet us at JVI Video. Use the hashtag three stars at Sealax League. On Twitter, of course, the Demons Turf Dogs also on Twitter and Facebook. You can watch for the play of the week on Facebook. As Josh Wasson, right in front of us, starts it off here for the Turf Dogs. They had the floor spread a little bit. Still spreading the floor. Montour gets dumped in front. Looks up, wanted the moving pick call, but it's a goal down low for Dylan Goddard that ties things up, and Montour straight at Grant Spies. I think it's just the argument as Montour wears the C, but... We've seen this act before from Tom Montour. We've also seen it from Grant Spies. Is that's something that he doesn't take lightly as there's the objection. Keep your eye on Montour in front. There's the battle, and Montour looks like he just lost his footing as he tried to backpedal. Goddard cuts through, takes the shot, and it gets in behind Lazor. Four and a half to play. We're tied again at 11. As Mike Atwood passes in for Ashton Jacobs. Jacobs still with it as he gets double teamed on the boards. Patrick McRory and Joe Wasson as he comes back up top. Harris again! Ball straight up, just bounced back to him. He's got four. And a hat trick late here in the fourth quarter. Score by 
Back to the faceoff, Dot again. This time Mike Atwood and Mike Triolo, they rig around the rosy, picked up by Ken Aaron. Out of the reach of Cody McMahon. They want the over and back called and they're still gonna rule it, still the faceoff. Palmer Funkenhauser shaking his head no. As he is the draw official, is the technical man. From the outside, Masters with a peek behind. Oh, recovers just in time to Stone Atwood again. Chris Atwood in front, up for Wayne Hill. Three and a half on the clock. The Demons bench screaming at their guys to use the clock. They're up by one, 12-11 now. Trying to stretch it to a two-goal lead. Those have been hard to come by here in this game as Atwood can't handle the pass and three Turf Dog players break out. Led by Josh Watson who has the ball. He's going to slowly bring it up over center. And now running in is Hopcroft. Hopcroft and print up. Here's Hopcroft up for Hogarth. Hogarth cutting in to the crease, diving there and Lazor turns that one aside. Ian Martin into the corner to play for it. Took a bump, but he's going to come away with the ball. Into the triangle here as Hopcroft gives him a first bump. Now he slips in front of the turf dog bench. Hogarth right on him. Checks to see if he's okay after giving him a chop. And the ball rolls into the offensive zone, though, and Von Harris will slow things down. Jordan Thomas, Chris Atwood. He tries to bounce one through the legs of Chris Masters. It's not there. Atwood behind the net now. Looks for Thomas again, who was cutting in front. Bouncing it all the way back up, up top. Atwood and Von Harris becoming a quick powerhouse on that far side. And Winster Green finds a hold to the right of Masters. And it is a two-goal lead with 2.08 to play now. Here comes the shot. And we're back to the faceoff dot. Mike Atwood took a big run after winning the faceoff. It rolls down for Joe Wasson though, after the ball was knocked free. In the corner, here's Guerin on his wrong side. Corkscrew shot, Hogarth scores. Oh my goodness, 13, 12, minute 47, as the Turf Dogs won't go away. Hattrick for Hogarth. There's his numbers from last year, as he had a game part of this season. In at the start of this game, he just streaks to the middle. Like we said, becoming trademark Thomas Hogarth, cutting through the middle, going straight to the rebound, and he takes the shot and it goes through Hogarth. Final three possessions of regulation. Wenster Green over the top. Green will get it back now, passes in front. Atwood on the crease. Shot comes in. And there's going to be a huge bump on the far side. Ball awarded to the Demons with 118 on the clock. Von Harris was walking up the boards away from the net and as pressure came from Clover, cut back. Now stops, it goes around the horn. Chancey Johnson in the corner looking for Wenster Green. Green's gonna cough it up, dumps his man. McNulty looking for Triolo and it skips away from him. Final minute of play. Masters was on his way to the bench. He's got to come back as Chancey Johnson comes through the middle. Quickly to Atwood. Back up for Kyle Jamison now. Jamison for Atwood. He's got room to shoot as Guerin steps up on him. Jesse Guerin looking for the pick. It comes from Montour. Montour to the ball. The shot and the goal. And what happened afterwards? Chancey Johnson looks like he may have dropped somebody. There's a turf dog hurt. Gear has gone flying from Masters. Chancey Johnson has grabbed someone. Now Montour after Masters. 
Johnson grabs the jersey of Joe Wasson, who seems to be in the wrong place at the wrong time all the time, as it was Ben McCullough who gave it to Joe Wasson before, and it's Jesse Guerin getting up slowly. Trainer just now being let out on the floor is Chris Atwood exchanging words with Chris Masters. Kyle Jamison and Masters chirping. Far from over here, we'll keep our replay machines recording here as we show you the goal. There it is from Montour, and now Grant Spies has tossed somebody as, oh, yeah, welcome back to Seahawks, Chance and Johnson. Tom Montour, mock applause as he heads off. And Matt Giles coming over now to maybe have a word. We'll see what the calls are here. I think Chancey Johnson will miss the last 36.2. They got to hold Johnson into the bench. He's still screaming at someone. It was actually Tom Montour on the way in who put the bear hug on Johnson and threw him in. And now the wave from Montour. We were considering him for three star. I'm pretty glad that we didn't put him on that list after this display. As we seem to see this a lot from Tom Montour. Steven Stamp and myself had the conversation on, on Friday night. No Travis Hill, no Roger Weiss, no Wayne Van Every, and used to seeing stuff like this from Tom Montour, the chirping, the late in the game, the pointing at the scoreboard. Tremendous amount of talent, but now that he wears the C, what's that leadership look like for the rest of this Oswegian well, Demons team? Jake. Jake Henhock has the helmet on. We can tell you it's 16 to 8 out in Paris as we'll get another look here at the goal. Tom Montour gets into the face. Oh, it's Masters that starts it with the punch, and then Johnson comes flying in off the fan straight into the back of Guerin. So Johnson, it was Masters into Montour, and then Johnson from behind on Masters. And again, there's a look inside the penalty box. Chauncey Johnson, Chancey, as I've been told, sitting to the screen left of Tom Montour, standing up wearing the C. Mark Farthing, Mike Miller, I guess as one of the assistants will go over for the conversation as Grant Spies gives the word. Looks like Montour and Johnson gonna be shown the gate here. No big surprise with 36.2, so. Scrum in the crease in Paris. We get one here ourselves at the ILA in what's becoming a chip. Week number three. Again, week three will conclude here this evening. We're watching it back on our monitors, Montour scored and stuff has gotten in the crease of Masters a few times here this evening and he took exception prior to and as Montour got a little close after the goal he <laughs> shed the equipment. The trainer has gone to the room it looks like with Jesse Guerin. And Johnson has gone to the room, as has Montour. We'll have to get Diamond Jim Lowe to sort this one out. PA announcer extraordinaire. Last time we'll show it to you, 36.2 on the clock once again. 14-12 inside the ILA. Montour scores, and then maybe a bit of a forearm. And then he comes close to Masters. And there's the shot, and then there's... Chancey Johnson playing, I don't know, big strong man coming in to the back of here and who had nothing to do with that. Timeout called by the Durham Turf Dogs. As they'll still try and sort this out. Jonas Dirks now to the open door as he wants
They just announced the goal. Jonas Dirks wants the explanation. And Masters, I think, is going to come out of the net here. The net <laughs> and he points to the gauge and says it's still way off. It's actually pushed all the way back to the boards where it was from that scrum. Lazor will stay in. Henhock put the gear on, expecting, I guess, to get the call. But in the game as tight as this, 36.2. We'll see what happens. John St. John, as the in-home, goes to the box. As does it look like Jordan Thomas. I believe he's the in-home as well. And Matt Giles is blowing up on Grant Spies right now. What has been a quite entertaining game has quickly turned for what I would say the worst here inside the ILA. It ends up being a power play here for the Turf Dogs. They're quickly to the set. McNulty on the crease, up for Goddard. Goddard over the top looking for Hopcroft on the crease. May have been in the crease from where we saw. And it'll bounce to Kenny Aaron. His sidearm shot the length of the floor. It bounces off the backboards. Wasson quickly now to meet it though. 15 on the clock. Wasson up the near side for Hopcroft. Here's Hopcroft with room to shoot. Takes it into the logo of Jake Lazor. And he wouldn't let Wenster Green by. Green gave him a shot as another one gets iced. And Wasson from his own end will just rip a shot that'll go... Well wide, not sure where it landed, but it'll be a, what ends up being a hard fought battle for the Oswegian Demons who take the goose egg away from last weekend, 14 to 12. Oswegian win here over the Durham Turf Dogs. What a game start to finish. No lead, higher than two goals. And that is the final margin of victory as well as the Oswegian Demons win. His standings as they played the first loss now of the season for the Durham Turf Dogs as they continue to sit at six points. Barry looks like they'll drop their game out in Southwest. Southwest and Oswegian pick up victories as... Oswegian had a couple more games played than that. They were at one and three coming in, but there is quite the log jam in the Canadian Lacrosse League standings. And 35 seconds ago, both of these teams wanted nothing to do with each other. They line up, they shake hands, and they head on their way. Our three stars of the game, as helped by you, the fans, on Twitter. Our third star, Lex Green. Lex Green. Goals to assist and a great job on defense, as especially in that last push was matched up with uh, Derek Hopcrop. And we take him for our third star of the game from your Speak of Demons. Second star, we look to the Durham Turf Dogs. A couple names that could have gone in this spot, but we go with another defender who had some scoring touch here as well. Cody McMahon again could have put. Tom Montour in this spot, maybe Chris Atwood, Thomas Hogarth, after the numbers were in, got his third goal, but Cody McMahon, a power play marker, and, assist, and another goal added an extra assist as well. Our first star of the game, down the stretch especially, he wasn't even on the list at the official's timeout. So Vaughn Harris plays himself into our first star conversation. Four goals performance, one short-handed, one on the power play. Final score, 14 to 12. Game is still underway. Out in the carriage. Carried a piece of rocker that just recently scored. 16 to 9 there. Gary, do they have another comeback in them? Our director has been Alexander Frazow. Our producer, Gary Morrison, on behalf of them and our crew, and everyone in the Canadian Lacrosse League, I'm Matthew Carrick. We'll talk to you next week, ladies and gentlemen. Now to Spencer Tangay in Paris, Ontario. 16-9 as we send you to the Southwest Cyclops and the Barry Blizzard. Thank you for watching.
Selfishly passes that across east-west through the high slot area to find Brady Heseltine, who puts in his fourth goal of the game, I believe. Heseltine having a very excellent night here at Sillaps Community Center. Makes it 17-9. With possession, Southwest goes to the far side. And now Patrick Miles just can't get a stick on it. Miles gets sent to the ground. Battle continues in front of the Barry Blizzard bench. Whistle blows and we're gonna get a stoppage. So Brady Hazeltine gets his fourth of the night. Cody Ward and Jordan Dance pick up the assists. to work on their six on five game as they only have an eight goal lead. Dance, long fake shot that turned out to be a pass down low and that's picked off but A penalty's happening tonight as players shove each other as they go off the floor. But not much else coming from that. Off for the Barry Blizzard in the penalty box is Dustin Caravello. That was the final they won, and they beat the undefeated Durham Turf Dogs at the Iroquois Lacrosse Arena, home of the Six Nations Rebels, Arrows, Chiefs, and Minor Warriors. So, power play now. Excuse me, four on four opportunity as the Southwest Cyclops player won off for a penalty. Penalties are hard to keep track of in tonight's game, as you'll need a lot of pens and a lot of paper to keep track of all the penalties. But really, all my gonna bounce it down the floor, and Matt Spanger's gonna hold on to this one. That'll do it for tonight's game. The Southwest Cyclops get the victory and finalize the score 17 to nine. Tonight's three star selections are presented by JVI Video and they're all coming from the hometown Southwest Cyclops. Third star and a fantastic night for Gage Board. Gage Board number seven. He had a few assists and he had the last assist a beautiful, unselfish pass to go east-west. Fantastic performance from Gage.